The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Tony. Hey, guys. How's my sound? Hey. Is it better? It's good. It's great. Okay. Is it better than before, or is it kind of... Yeah, it's like, pretty good. Okay, pretty good. okay. That's, I got a new headset. Pretty, so. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Sounds good. Awesome. Uh, now, now, the question is, how's your ability to play videos today with sound? <laughs> that, that's that's the real question, Tony. Are we <laughs> there yet? Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see soon enough. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just hashtag Linux things. You have to know the specific way to do stuff to make it work. But once you do, it's, you know. I yes. mean, kudos to Tony for running Linux and being a purist and figuring that all out. So I kudos to him it. for that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was trying to plug in my new headset to Linux, and then I had to find the MAC address. So I was trying to do that, and then I just found a cable. So I was like, I'm just going to put in the cable. So that's what I've done now until I figure it out. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not there, guys. I'm not there. But good for it's you. A, it's a pain. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a true pain. Uh, before we get into the new section, I wanted to say uh, Brindle. So as a fellow European... Flying is safer than any other mode of transportation. You did mention the fear of um, heights. Yeah, it was kind of maybe like a bit scary for me too in the beginning, but it's it's really safe. So um, if you can get over it and come to Mexico, that'll be awesome. If not, um, it would be cool to have uh, Monero Topia in, in Europe. We had an algorithm say in the comment section on YouTube. Let me see if I can find it. He mentioned Bosnia. Uh, Montenegro. I mentioned Albania. There's a couple really good countries in which we, we could host it. Albania is really cash friendly. Like they reject card pretty much in a bunch of places. If you have a card, it's kind of pointless. Last time I went, you just need cash. Uh, but for the current Monerotopia, um, in case you haven't bought your tickets yet, uh, you should use code Tony24. I think Tux has a code. There's other codes, I think. Um, but make sure to use it to get your 10% off for the conference. And one more thing, and we'll get into a new section. We're almost 10 K, which is really, Oh wait, are you uh, showing, are you showing your screen right now? Cause we don't see it. No, 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 not yet. Okay, I okay. was going to do it now. Um, give me one second. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. In one second, but yeah, so we're close to 10 K so guys, uh, Hopefully we can make it to 10k soon, like like and share. And then I do like Tux's uh, <laughs> new setup, and it kind of reminds me of uh, this guy's setup. I'm not sure if you know, I mean, should I just come over here every week to do the the show? That that's kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of this guy, more place yeah. dates. <laughs> like a similar setup. <laughs> he's he's at the beginning of the more place, more dates journey. Now he's gonna get super jacked. He's like, join me on my journey. As I is this a a lifting this YouTuber? One. <laughs> oh, he owns the, the biggest uh biggest uh, supplement company. I mean the biggest, yeah, biggest and the best, actually. Interesting. But uh he's not he's, uh, his... he's he's pretty knowledgeable, that guy. I've tuned into some of his, some of his uh <laughs> workout advice. He's actually oh, pretty so good. You know. Yeah, yeah, his belts are huge. Um, okay, let's get into the actual new section, guys. Uh, we got to get him using Monero, man. We got to get him using XMR chat for his super chats. <laughs> Come That'd on. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about migration in Europe. So, and it does relate to, to Monero. Two weeks ago, we discussed how um, Sweden is now paying 35,000 euro per uh, person if you're a migrant to move back to your country in an attempt to <laughs> i guess make him go back but it's just gonna make people want to come in to get the money and get out it's horrible uh and they're just ruining europe with their uh, policies um essentially with bringing all these violent migrants um so first thing i want to show this video this guy which he might be a migrant, maybe not, but it's really disrespect what he's done and then relate it to, to something else. So let's just watch a little bit of this. So essentially he's in Oktoberfest in Germany, just pushing people off. And the thing is, nobody's doing anything. People are just looking, nobody's doing anything. And in certain countries, he <laughs> that would not have been allowed. Um, but then I want to bring it to this. Viktor Orban, he's the Hungary's prime minister. And 
I the point was to bring the the point that I wanted to bring is that when you go against the EU and what they want to do, um, they really go against you. So Hungary has been fined two hundred twenty million euro for not accepting their new migration laws, um, which is which crazy. Is crazy. Crazy. So the moment you go against uh, the EU or any big organization, go globalist, globalist, the they're going to go EU, against the UN. The oh my God. The yeah. UN, all of them. So what did he do, Viktor Orban? He said, okay, you're going to find us 120 million. We're going to make a bus since you like, my, and we'll play the video, but we're going to make a bus <laughs> shipping all the migrants to Brussels <laughs> from Hungary to Brussels. Since you like him so much, and that's what that's what they did. So let's just watch a little bit of uh, this video. And again, this all relates with Monero just portraying because if it weren't for for these politicians and their ridiculous rules, there would be no need for Monero, which is the, <laughs> it's the ultimate form of freedom. Yeah, let's watch a little bit of this saying under his six-month EU presidency, he would tackle the bloc's major issues, security, competition and migration. Migration is an issue which is a disintegrating factor. Why do we need it? So if you have a problem in Italy and in many countries that you decided to let many migrants come in and now you have difficulties how to manage to live together with them, it's a serious problem. The Hungarian government's anti-immigrant rhetoric was furthered when a senior official said Budapest would bus illegal migrants to Brussels. Az Európai Unió Brüsszel arra akarja kényszeríteni Magyarországot, hogy engedjük be azokat az illegális migránsokat, akiket eddig feltartóztattunk, akiket eddig egy millió alkalommal tartóztattunk föl a magyar déli határnál, akkor Magyarország az európai eljárás rend lefolytatása után felajánlja ezeknek az irágés migránsoknak, hogy önkéntesen, ingyenesen, egy útra, akkor Brüsszelbe szállítjuk őket. So for the people watching, uh, not being able to watch the video, but just listening, essentially it's been said that the migrants will be offered a one-way ticket free of charge to, to Brussels. But now, if you take this and what they've done just to this, to Hungary not abiding to their migration laws, what's going to happen when maybe more European countries are going to want to jail you for retweeting something that misinformation or against the government, which we'll get into in a second. But Hungary is based, man. Hungary, Hungary is the Texas of, of Europe. Victor, yeah, yeah. And Poland is quite good too. Uh, yeah, but Poland Victor Orban. Too, Poland too. Yeah, it's really good. Now, um, just on this again, uh, UK is crazy. I can't imagine living there now. Uh, but a uh, couple said, we reported migrants uh, we found hiding in van. Then we were slapped with 3,000 a pound fine. <laughs> so they essentially went to France uh, to purchase some antiques. They came back, saw some migrant hiding in their van. They reported him or her, and then they were fined. And this is in the UK, uh, which takes us to this. Fine for what were the yeah. what was the law they broke? I guess just not being friendly to migrants. That not being accepting to, to the invasion of their their culture and society. <laughs> yeah, essentially. It's kind of, yeah, Incredible. I talked. And I'd like to point out that all these these couple things that were shown these are incredibly incredibly mild compared to what has actually like happened uh, to a lot of these European countries that have forced migration. Uh, anything you could think of has happened, things that I won't say on the stream, but yeah. It's okay if you didn't say it now, because we'll get into it later. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but actually I talked to my friend uh, from Romania, and she said that in one of the biggest cities, it's not as bad as in other countries, like it's still safe, but you go to get served food and there's no Romanian serving food, just migrants. Um, but so now let's talk about more news from the UK. Retweeting is now a crime. So essentially, if you retweet, that means that you like what you retweeted. So you could be jailed. 
Now let's watch this. It's uh, 30 seconds. If you retweet that, then you're republishing that, and then potentially you're committing that offence. And we do have dedicated police officers who are scouring social media. Their job is to look for this material uh, and then follow up with uh, identification arrests and so forth. So it's a really, really serious. People might think they're not doing anything uh, harmful. They are, and the consequences will be visited upon them. It's not crazy if you're, say, an elderly person and you happen to they be on the internet. They've got police scouring the internet. Yeah, that's, that's Some... crazy. Cloud world tier shit. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's, um, but talking about crazy, uh, we've been talking about this for more than a year, I think, uh, the ban on cash payments over 3,000 uh, euro in Europe. Of course, this is so that they push you on the digital euro eventually. And of course, this is to fight money laundering, terrorism, and so on. Uh, but yeah, this is a clear first step towards banning cash altogether in order to gain full control over our finances. And then if we go on this website, the European Consumer Center in Germany, um, we find a list of countries that have no limit on cash. If there's no limit. Uh, then there's no limit in the referring legislation, however, restricted use in practice and cash payment limited. Austria, no limit. Then let's go to my home country, Romania, and there is a limit, 5,000 lei, which is not a lot. It's like $1,000, uh, which is crazy. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's quite enforced because we don't tend to, we have laws in Eastern Europe, but we don't really abide by them. Um, let's see Portugal, actually. Payments of value of 3,000 euros or more may not be made in cash. Okay. Yeah, so it seems, oh, let's see the UK, that's it. <laughs> I'm curious. Can make cash payments without any limits. Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, it's gonna come soon to the UK, so. Uh, but then let's get into Monero specific news. Can swapping be traced too? No. <laughs> so let's get that out of the way. But um, so somebody said on Reddit, I started swapping on my Bitcoin to XMR as I started reading more articles about Bitcoin and being as anonymous as I thought taxes and other stuff. And I can't find an answer to one question. If I use a decentralized swap or unstoppable swap, for example, for swapping, will my swap Bitcoin turn into dirty XMR? <laughs> dirty XMR. <laughs> No. That, that's a good question. That's a good question. But yeah, the answer is resounding no. Yes, very good question. That's why I wanted to bring it up for maybe new listeners. But uh, he said, I'm not an expert on the matter, but I heard something about dirty coins. It uh, just sounds funny because of how foreign that concept is to Monero. Dirty XMR. <laughs> yes. So there's Monero is fungible. There's no such thing as dirty. Uh, one Monero equals one Monero. Nobody, no, it doesn't matter who touched it or who didn't. Or what happened or who used it when what it doesn't matter so uh, in case you were thinking about this too can swap and be traced too nope uh then are you sick of <laughs> crazy cleaning fees on airbnb i've actually stopped using airbnb because i go on it i see something decently priced then the cleaning fee is 130 dollars or something crazy which i think i can just clean it myself but um <laughs> You can now go on XMR Bazaar and uh, rent an apartment. So let's go to this listing. You can get quite a lot of services now on XMR Bazaar, cleaning, Airbnb. Uh, you can buy cars, uh, homemade food. Uh, it's growing quite fast. Uh, but if you're in Scotland, Edinburgh, and you want to get a apartment, um, you can go to XMR Bazaar and use Monero for $154 a night for now, because price does fluctuate, but so that's that's <laughs> that's really cool. Um, then let's get a bit more technical about Monero. Um, Lee posted on X, I'll give 100 XMR to TechLeaks24 if you can match a Monero key image to a transaction output. Uh, TechLeaks, let's go on his profile. We actually have him. Here, yep. So he is a Dero node, I guess Dero Maxi privacy activist. Um, 
which <laughs> talks down about Monero, saying stuff as uh, surveillance capitalists are hiding behind Monero to fight the state of the art cyberpunk tech Darrow. <laughs> On whose side are you? Um, all this stuff. And there's, um, let's see. And then I, I wanted to, because they talked about uh, essentially Monero and the key, this thing called key image analysis. So I wanted to bring it up and discuss it a little bit in case you've seen his posts or some concerns um, about Monero's, uh, whether it's being cracked or not. But uh, somebody asked on Reddit, I am interested in your most critical take on the capabilities of key image analysis. So I understand this is an attack that is enabled mainly by aggregating massive amounts of metadata partially on chain and partially through CEX. John Doe on YouTube, TechLeaks has been spamming on the coin market cap community page with his blog. Yeah. Um, Rocknium actually responded. So he said the key, and I'm going to read most of this. Um, it's, it's really important. So I'm just going to pretty much read it verbatim. But the key image analysis is just black marble and EAE attacks against the ring signature privacy model that have been known for a long time. How long? Within less than six months of the Monero Genesis block. The Monero Research Lab released a research bulletin, a note on chain reactions in traceability in CryptoNote 2.0 that covered this. The big unknown is how many of Monero's outputs could be owned by an adversary. If it's the vast majority, then that's a majority privacy problem. The centralized exchanges own most of the outputs, and do they share that information with chain analysis companies? Bear, uh, paper, uh, Makarov and Shor, 2021, blockchain analysis of the Bitcoin market found. Starting from 2015, 75% of real Bitcoin volume has been linked to exchanges or exchange-like entities. Probably now <laughs> the number is way, way bigger. Um, does exchange activity account for a large share of Monero transactions too? That's a harder question to answer using open research methods because so much information in Monero's chain is hidden, unlike Bitcoin. Then I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, there's no similar problem with FCMP++ after the suspected black marble spamming earlier this year. MRL meetings considered activating a new hard fork in the short term to raise ring size to 4060 instead of the current 16 to provide a large safety margin. Uh, and then he posted his analysis. But then lastly, uh, he said, Rockneem said, as time went on and MRL discussion progressed, it appeared that the FCMP++ research and development is going smoothly and quickly enough that it seems like it is better to wait until FCMP++ can be activated in the next hard fork instead of having two disrupted hard forks in a short period of time. So um, yes, in case you were wondering uh, about this key image analysis, chain analysis, tax, how does it relate to Monero? Um, you can find more details on um, on Rockneem's uh, research. Yeah, we, we had a whole show too with Arctic Mine where we went through the chain analysis video and Arctic Mine literally, you know, explained explained everything. But it's it's this it's the same it's the same concept, right? Being able to the the, the weakness, uh, the flaw of ring signatures, the EAE tack that can be done, which will go away with full chain membership proofs. Yes. Um, now let's talk about, this is quite big too, uh, Tornado Cash and Gessler and his new um, ruling. Um, so Tornado Cash uh, needed the banking license, Samurai Wallet needed the banking license, what's up, Apple X, probably all needed, need licenses too. Uh, doesn't make any sense, correct. That's why the SEC has proposed a rule to formalize licensing requirements for communication protocols. Um, critics argued that the rule may be weaponized to criminally indict software developers in an already hostile environment for crypto and privacy devs. Uh, let's go to this, and then we'll go into an article about Kensler's uh, new licensing requirement requirements. Um, so Zach Shapiro wrote on X. Uh, main points of the Tornado Cash ruling so far, and there are seven of them. BSA doesn't require control for money transmission. Uh, two, 2019 guidance doesn't have broad control requirement for money transmission, and total independent control is merely one part of a four-factor test specific to the wallet section of the guidance that 
specifically does not apply to mixers. Uh, Tornado free Tornado Cache is not meaningfully different from custodial mixers like Bitcoin Fog and will frustrate the purpose of the PSA to treat it differently. For Tornado, Tornado Cache service goes far and beyond the provision of network access services. Five, Storm is not prosecuted for merely writing code, but if he was, jury should acquit. Six, immutability of the TC pool contracts is a factual issue in dispute. Despite the apparent admission, the government's opposition brief to the contrary. And last, no one protection for financial activities using blockchains. Now, um, so let's go a little bit about on uh, this article. So again, SEC Chair Gary Gensler expressed intent to rule on amendments uh, to rule 3B16 of the Exchange Act by November. Uh, let's go down. Let's see where is it. Uh, so one specific. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, somebody said, as an investor, I understand the need to modernize regulations to address gaps in oversight of electronic trading systems. One anonymous commentator writes, uh, defining an exchange as any system with non-firm trading interest is essentially broad and vague. This could unintentionally. Uh, this is important, encompass a wide range of communication platforms and online forums that enable discussion about transactions but, not, but do not themselves execute trades or constitute regulated exchanges. Um, yeah, so this could be um, the path towards a more hostile environment for software developers and communication service providers today. Um, Seems unlikely that the proposed amendments to the Exchange Act will not be abused to further crackdowns on dissenting developers if the applied language remains as broad as drafted. So this was on communication protocols. Uh, then this is <laughs> this is really huge. So Tor and Tails uh, together, uh, partner together. So um, they wrote, a, they wrote an article saying countering the threat of global mass surveillance and censorship to a free internet, Tor and Tails provide essential tools to help people around the world stay safe online. By joining forces, these two privacy advocates will pool their resources. So that's great. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, they've been working together for quite some time. I think Tails has been around for 15, yeah, 15 years. Uh, and now they're together. So that's that's really good news. Uh, then, oh, somebody's Kevin said on YouTube, but why does Monero tank Doe? <laughs> John Doe wrote to give us a chance to buy more. <laughs> so uh, if you wanted to buy more, there we go. You can buy some more now at a cheaper price. Uh, OK, so. <laughs> Roseanne Barr, she tells Tucker Carlson, satanic elites eat babies, which I'm not sure if this is true or not, uh, but that's what she claimed. Uh, so uh, let's let's watch this video. It's actually two minutes, I may skip around. We'll see. You know they eat babies, that is not bullshit. It's true. So it's not just the dogs and the cats, not just the pets. It's not just the dogs and the cats. They're full on vampires. And everybody still thinks I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. They're full on vampires. They love the taste of human flesh and they drink human blood. They do, Tucker. Stop staring at me like that. You're freaking me out, man. <laughs> Because they you spent your life. <laughs> so essentially, that's what, that's what they're talking about. Whether it's true or not, I can't attest. But if it's true. It's... Wait, let, 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 let play a little bit longer. Let play a little bit yeah. longer. Okay. Yeah, what happened? No I was in mental institutions. Oh, Tony, I don't know what you do with the sound. No, really, it's not working. It was. Uh, what about now? Babies, that is not. Yeah, it's, no? it's working. Yeah. That's working. Yeah. Okay. In the entertainment business, so I think you have some authority on this. 
so many kids that I was in mental institutions with over the years, they are all from those cults and they've covered it all up. They cover it all up. And, uh, you know, I just pray to God. I'm just going to pray to God that he opens everybody's eyes in this country. By the time we go in to vote for Trump, that he will open up everybody's eyes and they will stop pretending to be asleep. You know what they say, you can't wake people up that are pretending to be asleep, but I pray to God, please wake up even those who are pretending to be asleep with the irrefutable truth of what the worst people on this planet are really up to. They are really up to that. They're doing it. There are so many victims. There are so many victims. There are so many children victims that are now adults. The epidemic in America is child sexual abuse, and I just want people to see it. I want people to open up their eyes and see how prevalent and horrible it is. One of three girls, one of four boys in this country today. It's just horrible, and uh, you just can't law, law, law it away anymore. It's going to get more and more apparent, and you got to choose your side. You know that. Gee, okay, I really hope he's not the one out of free. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I don't know. Is is Roseanne Barr speaking speaking the truth? Does she? I mean, I don't know, well, man. So I don't think she has any reason. I don't know. Any reason to lie. Well, if you Google her name, which I did, the first thing, uh, what is Roseanne Barr diagnosed with? First thing you see, multiple personality disorder. Now, uh, is it there? I don't know. It could be that what if it wasn't there before, but now she talked to talk her about this and then they bumped it up. So that the right. first thing you see is that. Yeah, Would that yeah. be it. Completely trying to discredit her. Similar to RFK Jr. having, uh, you know, that the, the one article the New York Times wrote about him was that he had uh, holes in his brain. I only heard the tail end of whatever that it was. Um, I had to walk away for a second. Wait, uh, RFK? RFK has holes in his brain. Yeah, he has like a RFK has like a was it like a a worm or something? Oh, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, my point is that was the one, basically the one time he was kind of highlighted on the cover of the New York Times throughout his his run for presidency was them claiming that he, you know, has brain worms and uh, brain worms <laughs> should be discredited as as you know a credible person. So obviously Roseanne Barr, you know, she's always been extreme in her views, but it, it's it's interesting that she's coming out with these. Uh, accusations that there's some dark nefarious things happening uh within the entertainment industry like you've heard rumors of, of this in various different ways these quote-unquote conspiracy theories i don't know it's just kind of crazy though that people are now saying it kind of with passion and conviction i'm inclined to not trust her in anything but at the same time if anyone <laughs> would know she would because she uh she's someone who uh would be allowed in those type of communities because of the race that she is yeah i just yeah whether it's true or not i just hope the last statistic is not true with the one out of three and one out of four that's i don't think that's that's kind of that's too crazy that's too much but i don't know any more news yes so i think i need to refresh this because i was watching it Let's see. Yes, so this is like two minutes. Um, but this is Sherry Tenpenny, and she's going to talk about the UN meeting uh, that happens last weekend in New York City. So it's actually nothing new. We all knew about this, but it's, it's so crazy. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch it. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, and I want to do a quick update about a document that got passed by the United Nations this weekend called the Pact of the Future document. It's two parts, one on science and technology and one about the youth and future generations. It is quite egregious and it was done by a procedure called the silence procedure, which makes it a pact 
And if no one objected, it is automatically adopted and put into the record as being completely adopted. This is the World Health Organization's runaround since our, our end around. Since they were not able to get the World Health Organization treaty passed, um, they decided to take it to the General Assembly. And it is even more egregious than what the World Health Organization was wanting to get passed. Let me just read you something really quickly about what is inside of this pact that is now being accepted by 193 nations around the world and equally open-armed accepted by our current administration. Everyone, it says that this is the power structure fully digital and maximized for the control of the masses. Everyone will be expected to have a biometric digital ID that marks them not just as just thing that's happening at the level of the World Health Organization and the United Nations. Um, anyone that has a dissonant opinion will be labeled as misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation, and memory hold. Perpetrators for unimproved information will be fact-checked and punished by the system, which will be operated and enforced by artificial intelligence. Punishments will include being locked out of one's bank account, being unable to make certain purchases, unable to get on an airplane, on a subway, drive on public roads. This is the future according to, to the world's self-appointed overlords at the United Nations. These are unelected bureaucrats that are making decisions about our country, our sovereignty around the world. Nothing could be more important at this point in time than to get prepared, have water, food, digital access, flashlights, a, a, a way to communicate with family and friends. Now is really the time to get involved and get prepared because this is what's coming. Our Congress is sitting on its hands. There was a press conference on the 17th about this and no further action has been taken. So it's up to us to mobilize and to, to, and to go forward, uh, particularly with your local sheriffs, to get your constitutional sheriffs to say, this isn't going to be allowed in my county. Thank you very much. Take action. We've been talking about the onset of one world order. One and she also, I think she got it up, but I think she also mentioned to buy Monero. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is this is not new stuff. We've been talking about it on on the show for the past couple of years. The direction in which they want to push us, uh, which is 1994 on steroids and really bad steroids, <laughs> aggressive steroids. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was a new section, guys. Um, again, if you haven't bought your tickets for Monerotopia. Uh, make sure to uh, use the code 2024, uh, you know, so you can get 10% off. Um, and we'll see you next week for the new Thanks section. Thanks, Tony. I do have one thing I want to quickly share, if I can, um, sure. that I think some people saw. So a fellow community member uh, who has been on the show before, Car Battery LB, uh, he's a Lebanese guy who sells car batteries and accepts Monero, and he's I think he's been on the show before, hasn't he, Doug? Um, he's currently... Uh, yes, yes, he, with, ha he um, has. And uh, I was going to ask him to maybe try to pop on, but I, I didn't, you know, it's, it looks like he's yeah, obviously he's in a, a lot right now. Um, but yeah, go, go ahead. He's heavily bombed right now. And so if you want to support him, uh, it looks like he added his Monero address uh, and it's pinned, so you can use uh, Bird Pay. You could just put in his username and send him a donation. Um, I've sent him a couple... Because uh, it looks like he's in a pretty bad situation. And he was going to host some other people at his house. And then he had to leave his own house. That to find another place to stay. Um, and this this kind of shit's just so messed up. This just shouldn't be happening at all. But Yeah, car, car battery. Uh, obviously, you're going through going through a lot. I'm sure Monerotopia is the last thing on your mind. But uh, at some point, if you ever want to come up and uh, 
tell tell us your side of the story what's what's happening there and yeah he's been on the show in the past great guy he was one of the earliest xmr bizarre adopters created one of the first listings and then was trying to onboard additional businesses in his area um so yeah it's unfortunate to see you know people people that we know actually uh dealing with the consequences of what's going on over there 